Don't get me wrong. I'm sure every abortion provider in the country would happily do away with the anti-choice protesters and agitators in a heartbeat if they could. But you got to admit, it would be terrible for business. After all, the people who are most in favor of ensuring safe and affordable access to abortion also tend to be the ones pushing for the policies that make it unnecessary. Of course, the point for anti-abortion activists is, first and foremost, to force births. And you can't exactly force a woman to give birth if they don't get pregnant in the first place. So they tend to oppose both abortion and all the things that have been shown to reduce their frequency. We got another great example of this from the Iowa Department of Public Health a couple of weeks ago. See, back in 2017, then-governor of Iowa, Terry Branstad, needed to prove how much he hated abortion. So he signed a bill that targeted the funding of Planned Parenthood. It rejected $3 million in federal money for the Iowa Family Planning Network and replaced it with a state-run program that forbade the use of their funds at providers that offer abortion. Because, you know, there are so many family planning facilities that don't offer abortion. Well, to the surprise of literally nobody who thought it through at all, this led to a shocking increase in the total number of abortions. They did manage to close down a couple of Planned Parenthood facilities, and I'm sure they cracked a bottle of champagne for each one. But by depriving people of all the educational tools and contraceptive access that comes with a nearby Planned Parenthood facility, they also caused a spike in unwanted pregnancies. So between 2018 and 2019, the number of abortions performed in Iowa shot up by 25% and shot up another 14% last year. Now, there are obviously far more serious problems with intentionally targeting family planning facilities than a rise in abortions. Less access to contraceptives generally also include a spike in sexually transmitted diseases and make it harder for poor women to access basic medical care. But if these idiots are unmoved by the fact that they're actually creating the non-problematic problem they're trying to solve, I doubt they're going to be moved by something as inconsequential as women's health. And as if that news wasn't enough to spur me into action this week, my arch nemesis, Lori Alexander, is at it again. And by it, I mean communicating with words, because pretty much any time she does that, I'm going to take issue with it. This time, she seemed to be all but directly refuting my reminder last week that shitty marriages are worse than divorces, because the lack of a bad thing is better than a bad thing. Well, Lori took to the interwebs to emphatically insist to the contrary. And look, anytime you're trying to make the argument that people should stay in miserable marriages because divorce makes the baby Jesus sad, it's a losing argument. But Lori manages to make that bad argument badly by opening up on how her parents constantly fought and were unhappy most of the time. And if there's anybody out there that needs to avoid the and look how I turned out argument, it's Lori Alexander. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have got a bit of packing to do. So I'm going to hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.